G'day, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Today's 27th of March 2022, so they say. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Hello to my subscribers, non subscribers, and trolls, bots, lurkers alike, and the malingerers. Welcome. Okay, do you know about this one? Concrete arrows and the US AML beacon system. Scattered across the United States are a network of mysterious concrete arrows. They are often found in remote locations or areas difficult to access. Some will be accompanied by a small shack, few have a metal tower affixed to their base, many are in good condition, while others have succumbed to nature. The shape and the direction of the arrows vary, but it's clear they serve the same purpose. The purpose was important, helping early pilots navigate US transcontinental flights at night. In an era before radar, pilots used ground-based landmarks for guidance. This solution worked for flight during the day, but grounded pilots at night. Before long, a system of beacons was established across the United States to guide airmail pilots around the clock. When radar and radio communications made the beacons obsolete years later, most were torn down or abandoned. So, so flight. Uh, 1924 does not include later spur routes. History. In the mid-19th century, the Wild West was largely unexplored. There was no infrastructure and very little law governing the land. Understandably, coast-to-coast -coast message delivery was non-existent. It was not until the gold discovery in 1848 that California became the destination for tens of thousands from the east. The trip across the country was arduous, dangerous, and could take anywhere from three to six weeks. By 1860, the Pony Express revolutionized transcontinental mail by offering delivery in about 10 days, nearly unheard of at the time. This was faster than the more volatile southern route favored by others. Knowledgeable frontiersmen would race across the country on horseback, covering vast distances and shorter times, while the Pony Express was significant in that it proved the northern central mail route was possible. It was inefficient compared to the stagecoach lines, higher costs and poor economies of scale would see the Pony Express fail to win the mail contract beyond its first year of operation. A year later, the threat of civil war descended upon the country and the resources were diverted to conflict. When the transcontinental telegraph line was completed in 1861, it immediately rendered the Pony Express obsolete. In the late 19th century, reliability of mail delivery improved, but it was not at speed. It was not until the invention of the airplane that the intercontinental mail delivery was witnessed its next major breakthrough. Early aviation and air mail. The Wright brothers made their first flight in 1903, and it wasn't long before pilots adopted air transport for mail delivery. By 1911, Fred Wiseman had conducted an unofficial air mail flight carrying three letters from Petaluma to Santa Rosa, California. The next day, a large exhibition orchestrated by Sir William George Windham in British India made the first official air mail flight. Windham used the event to generate publicity and raise money for charity. His pilot, Henry Perkett, would fly just over eight miles from Alabama to Nanny to deliver 6,500 letters. It wasn't until three years later the range of capability of mail delivery aircraft was really tested. In July 1914, the French pilot Maurice Gulex carried Australian mail 584 miles from Melbourne to Sydney, at the time the longest such flight of the world, in the world. By 1918, the east coast of the United States had limited air service. Mail service. Two years later, a North American transcontinental air mail route was finally established on the 20th of August 1920, 60 years after the Pony Express. Rapid delivery made the return to the US. The Beacon Tower System. Aircraft of the area lacked the advanced electronics for navigation during the long night, during night flights or through inclement weather. Long before the advent of radio guidance or instrumental flight rules, they are IFR, pilots were limited to visual guidance using landmarks to chart the route. Flying at night was out of the question. Bad weather and limited flight times meant delivery was limited and still spotted infrequently. The service was indeed faster, but it lacked flexibility and reliability of operations. By 1924, the Postal Service developed a solution that was efficient, if not elegant. A system of ground-based navigation beacons extending from New York to San Francisco would help pilots fly across the country at night and ultimately be the world's first such system. 
The early iterations of the system used approximately 1,500 airmail beacons, each constructed roughly between three and five miles apart. The beacons featured 50-foot tower with rotating lights placed on top of a concrete foundation in the shape of giant arrows measuring between 50 and 70 feet long. To increase the visibility of the concrete arrows, they were painted bright yellow. The first towers contained acetylene gas-powered lights which were fed by fuel stored in the shed at the base. At the top of the towers, rotating beacon with a 5,000 candle power would flash every 10 seconds. In the clear weather, the beacon lights could be seen for 10 miles, 16 kilometres. Below the main white beacon, a secondary set of red and green lights would flash in a Morse code letter to identify be the beacon to pilots. To accommodate for emergencies, intermediate landing fields were established every 25 miles along the route. The fields were constructed with rotating incandescent electric lights mounted on 50-foot towers set to sweep six times per minute. These less common emergency field beacons were visible up to 75 miles away. The program was an immediate success and continued to expand throughout its operational life. By the end of the first year, the airmail service had 18 terminal airfields, 89 emergency airfields and more than 500 beacon lights in operation. Rapid growth until obsolete. In the 1926 management of the beacon system was turned over to the Department of Commerce, which continued expansion for the airmail beacon system until 1929. As the technology improved, so did the towers. Later versions on spur routes were built 10 miles apart and equipped with stronger beacon lights, up to 1 million candle power, making them reportedly visible up to 40 miles in clearer weather. But by the 1930s, navigation and radio technology had improved to allow flight without land-based visual guidance. The Low Frequency Radar Radio Range LFRR, system began to replace older visual-based systems. The ML Beacon program would continue to operate full-scale until 1933, when technology advancements and the higher cost of operation during the Great Depression finally rendered it obsolete. After the program was defunded, various beacons would continue to operate in limited capacities into the 1940s. At that time, the Department of Commerce decommissioned and dis disassembled the towers for their steel, a resource in short supply and desperately needed to support the war effort. Mm. So they say. The last airway beacon was officially shut down in 1973, although the Montana Department of Transport Aeronautics Division reportedly continues to operate around 19 updated beacons in the mountains of western Montana. I'll show you these photos after I finish reading. Today, 90 years later, most of the towers have been dismantled. Many of the sites are long gone, victims of war, infrastructural growth and aggressive private developers. During the World War II, numerous concrete arrows were destroyed as well, so not to help enemy pilots visually navigate the country. Still, hundreds of the arrows remain, but today they lack the bright yellow paint and the cracks on the concrete worsen and with each winter freeze. Arrows on top of the mountains are safe for now, but several along the highways have already been lost to redevelopment. It's one of the arrows. Mapping. For the explorers out there, sometimes interesting has compiled a list with map links to locations with visible remains from the original, original airmail beacon system. The list is not meant to be comprehensive, but it does include many of the locations still visible today. This is continually updated as submissions are received. So Arizona 1, west of Phoenix, Arizona, the remains of Beacon 33. Of course, I would mention that one first. So the Los Angeles Phoenix airway are crumbling. The concrete arrow was no longer visible. The radio tower remains a bit in poor condition. The SI reader C, Alexandra Lee, visited the beacon and shared his Flickr photo set, which contains an ex excellent collection of images of the collapsing tower. Photo below, courtesy of C. Alexandra Lee. California 10 on Black Mountain in between Hornbook and Eureka. The remains of an arrow are still visible underneath some shrubs. Beacon number unknown, courtesy of SI reader David Callahan. SI reader Art Wilson tells us of the Beacon Tower at the airport in Blythe, California, which is used to be an emergency landing strip in Goffs, California, west of Needles Pictured Right, courtesy Art Wilson. Art elaborates when the Goffs 
Kofs airstrip was dismantled in 1936. The beacon was removed to was moved to Blythe, but at a different location from the current site. Recently, some six thousand dollars was spent on its renovation. The concrete arrow of the former MX1095 beacon can be seen just east of the airport in Montague, California. There is no concrete arrow or steel frame tower, however, the original light from the Mount Delabo beacon has been restored and replaced the top of the tower at the peak of Mount Delabo. The remains of the beacon power shed are keeping a concrete arrow completely tucked away in the hills off the I-15 in San Bernardino County, California, not far from Holleran Summit. Photos above, yep. Beacon 40. 14A is still overlooking US 80 in the Tahoe National Forest in California. The concrete area is gone, but the tower remains. A newer building has replaced the great generator shed next to the tower. Little other than the tower's foundation at Beacon 5 is still visible in Vacuil, California. Two arrow, two tail beacon is vandalized, but visible in Walnut Creek, California. About five miles east of the Men's Arena, Reservation and 10 miles north of the Interstate 8 in Southern California, the collapsed remains of the generator shed from Airway Beacon 5 of the San Diego Tuscan Airway are still visible. North of Wee, California, the remains of Concrete Arrow are on private property but still visible. Connecticut 1, the remains of Concrete Arrow have been recently been discovered and undergoing restoration at Bethany Airport CT. Thanks to Ray Hawkins, we know the Bethany Arrow, Bethany CAA 9, 2000 by 1375, irregular shaped, 1.25 miles north of the town and 9 miles north of New Haven. In 1927, Airway Bulletin number, 90, number 78, listed as CAA Site 9 and has a regular shape supported the New York to Boston Airway. Ray offered the Airfields Database site a suggestion for additional resources as well as this excellent write-up about Bethany Airport for future reading. Georgia 1, the last surviving airway beacon in Georgia, is 5 miles east of the Cartersville, Georgia. The, the remains of the Atlanta-Nashville Roots Beacon 3 concrete arrow have been preserved and were dedicated in ceremony on the October 7, 2016. The arrow is not publicly accessible, nor is it visible from satellite view, hidden under a canopy of trees in the Waterside State, Water Estate gated community, just off Arrow Mountain Drive, Beacon 3 of the Atlanta Nashville Airway, courtesy SI reader Nancy Reeves and Michael Salter. Idaho 4. There are a host of arrows which have been discovered around Bowes, Idaho. The concrete arrow just off Interstate 84, about 25 miles southeast of town, is all that remains of Beacon 27. SI reader Glenn Smallwood told us about three other beacons of southeast of Bowes. Beacon 26 is near Mountain Home Municipal Airport, while the tower is all that's left from Beacon OZ-1042 at the entrance of the airport on the southeast side of Bowes. Beacon 29, Beacon 27 in Idaho. A complete beacon in intact and visible in Dubas, Idaho. This location sits near the 4,750-foot gravel runway, which is open to the public. The beacon still has its tower and accompanied power shack, although the equipment inside is long gone. A complete beacon shack and tower are still standing in Malid City, Idaho, the concrete arrow is no longer visible, perhaps paved over, but the shack is sealed and appears to still be in use. This beacon is located on the public, on open public airport beacon number unknown. The concrete arrow by Strevel Road near Idaho-Utah border is clearly visible along the foundations of other facilities, now gone, beacon number unknown. Illinois 1. The faint outdoor outline of Concrete Arrow is hidden in some cornfields just off German Road in Stewart, Illinois. Note, the arrow isn't visible unless the corn has been recently harvested. Indiana 4. Between Moscow and Milroy, 
Their remains of concrete arrow are still in good condition, about 15 miles east of Shelbyville in Indiana, part of Cincinnati and in Indianapolis Airway, beacon number unknown. A concrete arrow from beacon sits in good condition at Shelbyville Municipal Airport, about 25 miles southeast of Indianapolis, Indiana, part of the Cincinnati Indianapolis Airway, beacon number unknown. About six miles east of Shelbyville on the E. 100N, the remains of a concrete arrow are visible on Google Street View, part of Cincinnati Annapolis Airway, beacon number unknown. Just west of Underwood, Indiana, the remains of a beacon are well hidden deep in the forest. The only the tower remains, and it is mostly hidden by tree. Thanks to SI readers Denver L. Dawn, Darwin Milkman and Jesse Finney and Aaron Stevenson, who made the trek out to Underwood Beacon on, in June 2017 and sent a photo below. Denver says the tower is still climbable and the decking is intact. The pad for the generator station has been broken up and there is no longer evidence of the arrow. It looks like they broke up the pad with a sledge and let nature take its course. Interestingly, we found the remains of several light bulbs. It seems to reason that the guy who climbed up there to change them just chucked the old ones off the top. Tower measures 50, I'm not sure, and has, uh, must be feet, and has 39 rungs of ladder, the top that each has 15 of spacing between, it must be inches, sorry, we have different metrics. Kansas 2, just outside of Anthony, Kansas, the remains of concrete arrow and a beacon tower are visible near the entrance to a municipal airport, beacon number unknown. About 10 miles southwest of Wichita, Kansas, the remains of concrete arrow from the Armadillo, Kansas City route still sits less than 50 feet off the West 87th Street, beacon number unknown. Minnesota 2, the concrete arrow of beacon 33 is still visible at Cottage Grove, Minnesota and is even visible in Street View. There are still towers on display in Indian Mounds Park of St. Paul, Minnesota. This 1929 example has recently been repainted to its original black and yellow livery. Missouri 1, near Hickory, Missouri, the remains of Amber Airway 4, Beacon 7's tower can be seen on the Nodeway Valley Conser Conservation Area. In Taco, Missouri, the tower from the former Beacon sits in the front yard of a Congressman Sam Graves just off the State Highway 0. The tower is visible in Google Street View. A faint outline of concrete arrow and generator shack is still visible in Buffalo Valley, Nevada, beacon number unknown, near Battle Mountain. Of note, at this particular site is the former emergency airfield in the shape of a giant triangle. I've seen these triangles um, out in the desert here in Australia. Thanks to the SA reader Mike Herbert, we know that the airfield's tower is now gone, but just south of the arrow, the foundation and some metal work from the beacon tower remain. Runways of the emergency airfield were marked with concrete curves and metal cones, some still visible. The airfield itself is visible from Google satellite view, picture that right. However, due to overgrowth, it's not as visible on the ground. 10 miles west of Miss Quiet. Sorry for saying these names wrong. In the desert of Clark County, Nevada, the remains of a concrete arrow are still visible. In Enterprise, Nevada, just south of Las Vegas, the concrete remains of a well-preserved two-piece arrow are still visible. Just outside of uh, Fernley, Nevada, sits a lone beacon tower missing the concrete arrow and generator shed, pictured right. Beacon number unknown. A concrete arrow is visible off the old Highway 40 near Glonnol Cold. I can't even say that, sorry. In Humboldt County, Nevada, the remains of an angled concrete arrow sits halfway between the... I don't want to even try and say them. I'm going to butcher them. In Lovelock, Nevada, another concrete arrow can be seen, beacon number unknown, up Beacon Hill Road, in Mopa Valley, region of Nevada, a concrete arrow is still visible. Beacon number unknown. There is a right angle concrete arrow originally from Beacon 50, still visible at Mon Montello, Nevada. Just outside Toybee National 
forest in Reno, the remains of an eastward facing concrete arrow can be seen in the mountains south of town. A well preserved tower of the Airway Beacon 32 is still in use at Wanamuka Municipal Airports in northern Nevada. You can even see the pristine example in Street View, no concrete arrow or generator shed. New Mexico 7, the concrete arrow is all that's left of Beacon 68, just west of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The faint remains of a concrete arrow can be seen in the now defunct municipal airfield in Columbus, New Mexico, Beacon Unknown, number unknown. The generator shed is all that's left of Beacon 61 in the mountains of Grants, New Mexico. The tower and concrete arrow may be gone, but you can still see 61 on the roof of the shed. Visit the Aviation Heritage Museum in Grants Milan Airport in New Mexico to see Beacon 62, originally located in Bonita Canyon, restored to its original 1930s appearance, complete with painted tower and corresponding generator shack, pictured at right. Two miles northwest of Sema, New Mexico, the concrete arrow of Beacon 64 sits behind Flower Mountain, not far from Interstate 40. Between Trinidad, Colorado and Rancho, New Mexico, a complete shack in its tower still sits in relatively good condition. However, there is no concrete arrow. If anyone has any information behind the absence of an arrow at this location, let us know. El Paso Puluba Airway Beacon 45, pictured right. About 15 miles west of the Wagon Mound, New Mexico, the tower is all that remains of Beacon 37 in the Denver-Albuquerque Airway. I hope... Ohio 1. The Newark Heath Airport in Ohio is the well-preserved example of Beacon 2 of the Columbus-Philadelphia route. Circa 1933. The SI reader and EAA 402 member Barney Kemter is restoring the beacon. He has already restored and painted the arrow. See below it. He also has plans to repaint the generator shed with CP on the roof and eventually add a historical marker. Barney tells us Beacon 2 with dates to 1930 is the last remaining arrow of... Barney also reveals the concrete arrows were placed, not poured. That's different. Oregon 6, just above Grants Pass, Oregon, the remains of a concrete arrow are still visible. A radio tower on site is currently being used by... KFMJFM, beacon number unknown. There is a concrete arrow off the dirt road in Metchikam, Oregon, beacon number unknown. The remains of a concrete arrow from Seattle's, Seattle to San Francisco routes beacon 40A is still visible in the mountains above Myrtle Creek, Oregon. A restored beacon tower is part of a protected monument in Rocky Butte Natural Area of Portland, Oregon, beacon number unknown. Above Roseburg, Oregon, the concrete arrow is all that remains of Beacon 40B from the Seattle-San Francisco route in the foothills above the I-5 corridor. A modern antenna system has been built atop the old concrete arrow in Wolf Creek, Oregon. Picture right above. South Carolina 2, near Effingham, South Carolina, the concrete pad of Beacon JR-28. Circa 1935 is reported he's still present, a bit overthrown by vegetation between Reedville and Woodruff, South Carolina. There lies a very visible arrow from Beacon 14, originally off the Atlanta New York line, and circa 1935. The arrow is also clearly visible in Google Street View. Texas 4, the concrete arrow and generator shed at the Delaware Springs in Intermediate Field are still visible deep in the remote Texas. Read them all about Delaware Springs Field here. At about 55 miles east of El Paso in the middle of nowhere, Texas, the concrete arrow of Hudspurth Intermediate Field barely pokes out of the bush, pictured above. Hudspurth was constructed in the 1930s by the Department of Commerce for emergency use by the airlines but hasn't been used in half a century. The concrete arrow from Salt Flat Intermediate Field is fairly visible in a lonely Salt Flat, Texas. The emergency landing field was another product of the Department of Commerce in the 1930s. This page has more detail on the now defunct Salt Flat Intermediate Field. In Shoe Water, Texas, the remains of a concrete arrow are still visible on some land owned by 
a relative of one of our readers, courtesy of SI reader Tommy Madden, beacon number unknown. A concrete arrow is still visible just outside S Sweetwater, Texas. However, it is on private land and not accessible. Utah 10, Beacon 58 Concrete Arrow is still visible just off the westbound side of the US 80 and just southwest of Great Salt Lake. Also southwest of the Great Salt Lake, the Concrete Arrow of Beacon 59 sits right off US 80 like Beacon 58 and 59. It's also the westbound side and is less than 10 miles away. The Concrete Arrow with twin tails from Beacon 61A can be seen just off the Lincoln Highway in Lake Point, Utah, pictured below. So there's the base tower remains there. Arrows point to Salt Lake Airfield. Tail from uh, faint remains of the concrete arrow in Locomotive Springs, Utah. Beacon unknown. Another concrete arrow. This one's from Beacon 37B. Can be seen on the south edge of the Shino Clive. Kai Mesa in Utah. Sorry for saying that wrong. Concrete arrow from Beacon 37A is visible from the Bloomingbill, Bloomington Overlook location in St. George, Utah. Pictured right. The arrow for Beacon 37B is still visible in the eastern reaches of St. George, Utah. Concrete arrow is all that's left of Beacon 37C at the Quail Creek res Reservoir in Utah between Hurricane and St. George, Utah. Pictured below. In Washington County, Utah, the concrete arrow remains of Beacon 40 sit on the ridge of North Pintura, less than a quarter mile west of the I-15, pictured right, courtesy SI reader Robert Ferry. In Woods Cross, Utah, there is a concrete arrow northeast of Salt Lake City Airport, Beacon number unknown. Washington 1, about 20 miles northeast of Ellensburg, WA. WA. The foundation remains of Beacon 10 from the Seattle-Spokane route can still be seen. Wyoming 7. The remains of a concrete arrow are still visible about a mile north of the I-80 near the ghost town of Bryan, Wyoming. Beacon number unknown. A shed and tower is still visible at Johnson County Municipal Airport in Buffalo, Wyoming. Beacon number unknown. In the wilderness outside Cheyenne, Wyoming, the remote concrete Arrow of Beacon 38 sits undisturbed. Picture below. John shared his encounter with Beacon 38. The concrete is still in amazing shape. The concrete is basically quartz pebble held together with cement. The arrow is going to be there for centuries if no one messes with it. The tower supports were cut off at the ground level and what appears to be the fuel oil shed foundation seems to be in broken up but is still visible. One other interesting point of note is the barren ground in the shape of the arrow just a foot or so off the edge of the concrete. My guess is they salted the ground there to enhance the arrow shape from the air. Decades later there's still nothing growing there. Before you consider visiting John notes this may be on private property. About six miles east of Hannah, Wyoming there are overgrown remains of Beacon 31 from the Salt Lake Omaha Airway. Head approximately seven miles west of Hannah and you'll Find the remains of Beacon 29, barely visible and just sitting just off 287. North of the I-80 outside Laramie, Wyoming, the shed and arrow from Summit Radio Beacon 38 from the Salt Lake Omaha Airway is still visible on Beacon Hill in the Laramie Range. Concrete arrow from Beacon 40 is also nearby, about 9 miles northwest of Cheyenne. In Medicine Bow, Wyoming, the remains of Beacon shed and tower are visible but in poor repair. Beacon number unknown. About five miles south of Superior, Wyoming, the remains of a concrete arrow are visible just north of the I-80. Beacon number unknown. That is so interesting. So let's have a look at some of these photos. I'll leave the links in the description for you as all. Sure. The towers weren't really that high, were they? It's interesting. 
wonder if it's sort of like the um, lighthouse's lights. I don't know. So one of the postage stamps, five cents, with the tower and the plane. So yeah, I'll leave the links in the description for you to have a look at. So wherever you are in the world, thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. You have a great day. Much love. Bye now.